sixth episode or the sixth segment of nine where I'm showing you how to make this particular vessel with the diamond feature ring. Today we're going to continue working on the feature ring. We're going to fine tune the segments we've been working on. Then we're going to show how to glue it up into the ring and get it ready for putting into the vessel. I'm sanding to make sure the top of the segments are all identical. Here I'm marking the end of the diamond and a second line 3 30 seconds of an inch from that line. Now what I want to do is slide these blocks along the fence up against the spinning disc, removing the birch up until the line. I want to leave the line on there because if I remove it, I can't judge exactly how far I've gone. So the line needs to stay there. Now that these are all cut to length on one end, I'm going to do the same thing on the other end. I'll mark it, slide it in using the adjustable stop. Once it's adjusted, I can get them all exactly the same length. Before sanding these, I put a small X on the same facet on each one of these segments just to make sure that I use the same orientation when I put them on the miter saw.
I've cut all of these a little short of the end. That's because when I put it on the disc sander, I'll use that to true it up and bring it right flush to the end. I also want to point out, if I was making a bowl or something you see the inside of, I would make this a little longer, a little more distance from the end of the diamond. On the inside, it's cut a little bit off. On the vessel I'm making, this is not a problem because you won't be able to see on the inside anyway. But a bowl, it would be a major problem. With the stop block set, I can be sure that I'm cutting each block to the same length. I've made a small pencil mark on the corner of each of the segments on the same side. I intend to run this against the sanding disc using my adjuster here. I'll have to do it by eye as close as I can. Then when they're all finished, I will flip them over, set the distance with the adjuster, lock it into position, and then feed all of those in. I have the ring put together now. There's no light showing, no gaps between the segments. So it's ready to go. Now what I need to do is prepare the thin pieces that will go between the segments. Because the slot on my sled is so wide, I'm nailing down a board which I can set the pieces on to cut for my thin dividers. I just run the blade across the board and have a zero clearance bed wide enough for the stock I'm using. One problem I had with cutting these thin slices was that if I pushed the sled all the way through, the wind on the back of the blade would send the little pieces all over the shop. If I tried pulling it back before I got it through, then the blade would hit the chip again and scar it. What I eventually found was that if I started the saw, let the blade come up to speed, and then turned it off with my knee before the wood hit, the centrifugal force of the blade would go through the wood, but it would slow down significantly and take less time for me. It worked.
This is the most tedious and my least favorite part of making this ring. Gluing these small thin pieces together is not my idea of fun. I was surprised to see that the walnut is coarse enough that the glue actually was squeezed through the grain. When the glue dried, the dividers were taller than the height of the ring, so I was able to true up one end on the disc sander. This will ensure that when I glue the ring together, this sanded end will be ready. I may have to do a very light sanding with the drum sander, but I like knowing that it won't be because the dividers are jagged. The faces of the dividers are not as clean as I would prefer, so I'm very lightly touching them up with 220 grit sandpaper. Alright, the dividers are finished, the segments are finished, everything's put together nice, no gaps, no light showing anywhere. Now it's time to glue it together. I'm going to do this a little different. Usually I would glue the whole thing together or maybe do it in half rings if I had light showing. Today I'm going to glue one of the dividers to one of the segments, put the whole thing together, clamp it up and let it sit for two or three minutes. The reason is, sometimes all it takes is one of these to not be flat, flushed down on my work surface and it throws the whole thing out of whack. I don't want to go and take any chances with that, so I'm going to put the whole thing together one segment at a time. It's going to take a little time. When it's done, I'll let it sit for two or three hours to make sure the glue is set real well and then it's back to the lathe.
I'm gluing the last two segments at the same time as I'm finding it is getting a bit difficult to fit them into place as the ring gets closer to complete. I'm removing the hose clamps to check the completed feature ring. And the feature ring is finished. I put it through the drum sander to take off the tops of those dividers that were a little jagged. And I did turn it over to the bottom. There was some glue on there. It's the best way to take it off. So that brings us to the end of the sixth episode of this series. The sixth segment, if you will. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, leave a like on the YouTube. Leave some comments if you like. Especially if you didn't like something I did. Let me know what it is. I can't improve if you don't uh, tell me how to do that. Let me know I'm not wasting my time. I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, come back for episode 7 where I'll carry on with building the vessel. Thanks very much.